Hi, welcome to episode 2. So this is what we created in episode 1. We created a class for the first enemy, the bee, made it fly in the sky and added flying animation. In this episode I want to start implementing our main character. We will implement three sprite animations, one for idle, one for running and one for attacking. Here are the sprite sheets for idle, running and attacking. These sprite sheets you can find in the assets directory on my GitHub. I have already added a class for our game character, class hero. And just like we did with the B class, we first import the class. We create the hero object and we place our hero at the coordinates 400, 400. And we make our hero face to the right. Every frame we need to call the update method on our hero object to update its position and the sprite animation. And also every frame we need to draw our hero. Now let's have a look at the hero class. Here we have the init method. The first parameter is the initial position of the hero sprite. And the second parameter selects if the hero should be facing to the left or to the right. Then we have the update method and the draw method, both haven't been implemented yet. Back to the init method. Here we will read the sprite sheets that I showed you before. One for idle, one for attack and one for running. This code should be familiar to you if you have watched episode 1. If you haven't done so, you should really watch episode 1, because in that episode I will explain sprite sheets and sprite animation in much more detail. To be able to extract the sprites, we need to pass lists of sprite positions for each of the three animations. Like we saw in episode 1, the lists contain the top left positions of the sprite in the sprite sheet and also the width and the height. And as you can see here, the sprites for the different animations have different sizes. This will make the implementation of our hero class a little bit more complicated. Ok, now I'm going to add some code to draw our character using the idle animation. Because the main character will have a lot of sprite animations in the future, we will create this dictionary that allows us to select the sprite sheet depending on the current state of the character. Then we initialize some variables for the sprite animation, just like we did in the B class. And we store the initial sprite position in xpos and ypos variables. The first thing we will do in the update method is to call the select animation method, in which we will choose an animation based on the character state. Let's implement this method. First we set the animation speed to some default value. But in the idle state I want to make the animation a bit slower than in other states. Let's define these values in the config module. Next, we select the sprite sheet based on the current state. And well, for now that can only be idle. From the sprite sheet we still need to choose the list of images to use. Should the sprite be facing left or facing right? Back in the update method. We set the sprite image to a frame of the current animation and we choose the frame based on the sprite index value. And now things are getting a little bit more complicated. Before I showed you that the sprites of the different animations have different sizes. 
The code here will define the rect based on the current animation. The size of the rect depends on the size of the sprites in each animation. And the sprites of the idle animation are 44 pixels wide and 52 pixels high. Xpos and Ypos are the coordinates of the bottom center of the sprite. But here we need to specify the top left coordinates of the rect. So here we calculate these using the sprite size. Let's draw this to make it a little bit more clear. Let's say this point is specified by the coordinates in x poles and y poles. And we want this point to be at the bottom center of our sprite. That means we have to define our rect like this. We need to subtract the sprite height from y poles and we need to subtract half of the sprite width from x poles to get the top left coordinate of the rect. The size of the rect is chosen such that later, when we draw the sprite image into the rect area, the feet of the main character are placed on the bottom of the rect. For some of the sprite animations, we will choose a rect size that is smaller than the sprite image. We will do this for the attack sprite animation, for example. In the attack sprite animation, the sword of the character is drawn below the character's feet. Sorry for the awful drawing here, but this is a sword. In this code here, we would define the rect like this. Why would we do this? There are two reasons for doing this. First of all, we still want the bottom center coordinate of the rect to be at the character's feet. And the other reason is sprite collision that we will look at later. Later, we will use sprite collision detection to see if our character is standing on a platform. And for collision detection, we will use the rect. So in this case, we don't want the part of the sprite image that is below the character's feet to be in the rect. Simply because we are not interested in the collision between the sword and the platform, but only the character's feet and the platform. Okay, I hope that explains the code above a little bit better. Next, we're going to write the code that is responsible for cycling through the sprite animation. And because we already saw this in detail in episode 1, I will go a bit faster here. And then finally, all we need to do is to draw the sprite image on the display surface at the location specified by the rect. And there we have the idle animation of the hero. Now we have the idle animation working, let's move on to the running animation. And we start by adding some code to our update method. First, I want to be able to detect changes in an animation. For this, we introduce the previous animation variable. We make it equal to current state of the last time the update method was called. We are going to use keyboard input to control the main character. So first we check which keys are currently pressed. If the left arrow key is pressed, we will make the character face to the left and change the current state to run. And if the right arrow key is pressed, we make the character face to the right and change the current state to run. But if none of the arrow keys is pressed, we immediately switch back to the idle animation. We don't need to change anything to the select animation method. For the running animation, we just use the default animation speed. And this code works just fine. We select the run sprite sheet based on the current state. And we select the list of sprite images based on if we are running to the left or running to the right. Before I mentioned, I want to be able to detect changes in the animation. And this is why. Every time we change the animation, I want to reset the 
animation index. So we start the new animation from the beginning. Next we position the rect, just like we did for the idle animation. The only difference is that for the running animation we have a different sprite size. And that should be all we need to do to get at least the running animation working. Let's give it a try. And yes, using the arrow keys, we can make the character face in the right direction and change to the running animation. And now the next step is of course to make the character move in the direction it is running in. Let's add two new variables, one for the horizontal direction and one for the speed. And speed hero, which is the running speed, I define to be the value 4. In the update method, we are going to set the horizontal direction depending on which arrow key we press. Negative 1 when we press the left arrow key, and positive 1 when we press the right arrow key. For updating the horizontal sprite position, we are going to implement a new method. And now we update the sprite position by moving the rect to the left or to the right. Next here can have the values minus 1 or plus 1 and speed has the value 4. So here we move the rect 4 pixels to the left or 4 pixels to the right. Why do we have a separate direction variable and a separate speed variable? Why not directly add or subtract 4? Let's say this code is a preparation for later. When we are going to implement level scrolling, we need a way to control the speed of the hero. But let's save that for later. And we update the expos variable that we also use to track the sprite position. And that's all we need to do. Let's have a look. And that looks good. We can run to the left or run to the right. Just one minor issue we need to fix. We can run outside the window. But there is an easy fix for that. We simply make sure that the left side of the sprite cannot have an X coordinate that is lower than zero. And the right side of the sprite cannot have an X coordinate that is higher than the window width. Does this solve the problem? Yes it does. We can no longer run outside of the window. The last animation I want to add is the attack animation. And for this we really don't need to add much more code. Let's trigger the attack by the spacebar key. When the spacebar is pressed, all we do is change the animation state. Note that we first check if the spacebar is pressed and only later if the arrow keys are pressed which means when we detect an attack, we will stop running. And I want to keep ignoring the arrow keys until the entire attack animation has finished. So here we are going to disable checking for key presses until we are no longer in the attack state. This happens when the attack animation is finished and we return to the idle state. And then the last thing we need to do is to reposition the rect position. Now let's check out those attack animations. And I think that looks good.
Okay, I think that is enough for this episode. Let me know what you think and see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please help my channel grow by subscribing and liking my videos. Hope to see you in the next video.